Today we're discussing IB outlets, IB actions, and IB outlet collections. We're gonna talk about what they are, how to use them, and a very common pitfall that hangs up a lot of beginners. You know, sometimes they'll spend two hours debugging this one issue that I'm gonna show you. So pay attention, that will save you some time. But first, today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. So as you can see here, I do have some elements on the screen that we're gonna use these outlets and actions to connect to our code. Uh, just to give a quick rundown, I just set the background to black, put on a label there and added three buttons, right? There's no outlets and I just constrained them. If you're unfamiliar with putting these elements on the screen and using auto layout constraints, I'm gonna to link to a video I did. We spent 20 minutes just doing a deep dive on these constraints. Uh, in this video, we're just focusing on the outlets, but if you need it, that video will be in the description. So what are IB outlets? Well, first of all, the IB stands for interface builder, which is essentially the storyboard, what we're looking at here. And what these outlets do is it connects the interface builder or the storyboard to your code. Let's actually create one to show you how that works. So here I am on my storyboard. Again, I've dragged the label and three buttons and added some little styling. Real quick, this right pane over here uh, is how you style your buttons, right? You can change the, the font, the color, and all that stuff. Again, that is covered in another video. But the outlet here, let's get rid of this right pane. And another little trick here, if you hold option and click on a file here on the left, it'll open it up in the assistant editor. So that way you can get them side by side. And when you're creating outlets and actions and outlet collections, you're gonna need them side by side because we're gonna to have to drag from the storyboard or from the interface builder to the code to create these outlets. So first let's create our labels outlet here. So click on the label on the storyboard and real quick, you can either do it from the element on the storyboard or the view hierarchy here on the left. We're gonna do it both ways so you can see. So just for this label, we're going to hold control and drag it uh, into our code. And you can see, uh, I get this uh, blue line here that says insert outlet or outlet collection. So just let go of the mouse button and now you have the option to name it. Well, first of all, make sure it's an outlet. That's what we want here. And the name, we'll call this message label. That's what we wanna name this. And it is a UI label and it is strong. So hit connect. And by the way, if you're wondering, you know, weak or strong, I'll also link to an article if you wanna read up more uh, about that. But essentially what I've done now is I've connected this label that says tap, tap the buttons, I dare you, and uh, connected it to my code through this outlet. And you can see if I hover over this little circle, you can see it highlights the label I have. So what this does for me is this lets me access the message label via the code. So if I wanted to change uh, what is actually in the label, I can do something like this. Like uh, now that I have access to it, I can do message, label and you can say I get autocomplete dot text equals and then pass in a string I just changed this right so let's run this just to show you how I now have access to the message label via code so now the label is going to say I just changed this when we run the simulator and I accidentally ran it on my phone as you can see here so we need to switch to the simulator the iPhone 11 Pro just in case you didn't know how to do that little bonus lesson uh, so let's run it on the simulator so here we are, you see the simulator running and it says, I just changed this. Again, what the outlet did for us was it gave us access to that message label in code. So now we can change that as we see fit. So that was just demonstrating uh, the outlet. And again, this can be, you know, we just did it from the label. Let's say the buttons needed an outlet. So again, click on the button, hold control, drag it and call this the uh, accept dare button. Make sure it's an outlet, UI button, strong, hit connect. Cool, now we, now we have access to the accept dare button in case we need to configure this button anymore in code. And now let's do another one from the change font color. I'm gonna show you how to use the view hierarchy this time. So over here on the left, and the reason you might wanna use this view hierarchy instead of the actual elements, if you had a really busy screen with a lot of elements or maybe you're doing some animations so the elements like not showing up on the screen, uh, you can use the view hierarchy here. Again, hold control, drag into here, and you can still create your outlet uh, there as well. So this is gonna be called the change font button again make sure it's the ui button strong connect and then last one hold control drag to the uh, dare so we're just creating all these outlets so we have access to these uh, via code 
And you may be noticing this is repetitive. Well, this is where IB Outlet Collections come into play. We'll get to that in a second. So let's name this uh, Reset Dare button, uh, connect it. So now again, we have access to our label and all of our buttons via code if we want to configure them. So like, let's say we want to make these buttons rounded. Well, we can do that now that we have our uh, access to our buttons. So we can do accept dare button dot layer dot corner radius equals uh, we'll do 12. And I can do the same thing for the change font button. And again, if you're a little bit familiar with programming, you've heard the term don't repeat yourself a dry, you notice, hey, we're, we're doing some repetitive stuff here. Uh, I'm going to show you how the IB Outlet Collections can help fix that. But let's run this and make sure that our configuration of rounding off the corners on our button is actually working. There you go. Now you can see we have nice rounded buttons, uh, again, because we had access via the outlets to our code to round the buttons uh, via code. So let's stop this. Now, before we move on to IB Actions, this is a great spot for uh, IB Outlet Collections because we have three buttons here and we're doing the same thing to all the buttons. So what the IB Outlet Collection is, is essentially an array of outlets. So let me show you how to create that. Click on one of the buttons. We'll do it from the Accept Air button. Uh, again, Control, Drag, drop it. And then now instead of an outlet, you want an outlet collection, right? And we're gonna name this Buttons because uh, again, it's an array of UI button. So hit Connect. And you can see, we'll make some space so you can see it here. You can see uh, var buttons is an array of UI button. So now we need to put uh, the other buttons into the array. And how you can tell what's in this IB Outlet collection, again, hover over the little circle and you can see uh, it, it highlighted the accept dare button. So that accept dare button is already in this array. Well, let's add the other two buttons to the array. So you don't have to control drag. You can just click and drag and you drop it on the change font color button. Now, if I hover over the circle again, look, you can see I have the accept dare and the change font button. So again, click and drag to add the reset dare button. Cool. Now, if I hover over, now I know all three buttons are inside uh, this UI button array called buttons, their IB outlet collection. So now what I can do, instead of, you know, typing all three of these out, I can use a for loop to iterate over that array and add the corner radius to the button. So let's do that. We can do for button in buttons. And we're gonna iterate over all the buttons that are in this IB Outlet collection. And we're gonna do button.layer.cornerRadius equals 12, right? So now again, we're gonna run it to make sure uh, this is all working. And there you go, we have our rounded corners just like before. So an IB Outlet collection can really help clean up your code if you find yourself doing a lot of repetitive stuff uh, like I just showed you. Now, before we move on to the IB Actions, which is the last thing, I wanna talk about that pitfall I mentioned earlier. And this has to do with the fact that the interface builder and your code are like two separate things and you're connecting them. So if you change something on one, but not the other, it's not gonna work out and you're gonna get a crash. And again, this is very, very common for beginner developers. Having outlets cause crashes, again, super common. And oftentimes you may spend hours trying to figure it out. So hopefully this saves you some time. Here's a common example, right? We have our IB outlet collection called buttons, which is an array of UI button. Well, let's say I wanted to change the name. Maybe buttons is too generic. Maybe I want to do like selection uh, buttons and then we have to change our array name down here on line 25. Okay, cool. Let's do a command B. Uh, everything's copacetic. Everything's good. No crashes. Now let's run this. And oh, our app crashed. What, like, what happened? And this is the very common thing. The one thing to keep in mind is, let's stop this and go back to our, our storyboard here on the left. Remember, Interface Builder and your code are two separate things and they have to match. So what happened, why this crashed, is this array called Selection Buttons doesn't match uh, what my Outlet Collection is. So how you can check that, if I right click on my uh, Accept Air button here, you can see all the uh, outlets and outlet collections. And if you look down here, referencing outlet collection, its name is buttons, not selection buttons. So again, this trips up so many beginners. Uh, you have to remember interface builder and your code, two separate things. You have to make changes on both of them to make sure they match or you're gonna get a crash. So a way to fix this scenario that we changed it to selection buttons is to delete the outlet collection by clicking the X there. And then we have to do this for all of our buttons, right? So now if I right click change font color, uh, you see it's still referencing outlet collection into buttons. So get that out of there. Same thing with reset there. So you can see how uh, these outlets can become a headache if you start changing things around. And you'll notice like I can't just drag and drop these in. Again, this is where the headache comes in. So what's easier, and, and this is just, there may be a quicker shortcut way. I've just found this easier is to just delete the outlet altogether and recreate it if you wanna rename something. So again, control drag, just like we did before, create the outlet collection, call it selection buttons, UI button. And again, I know this seems repetitive, but trust me, paying attention right now, and again, I'm just putting them into the array uh, by, by doing that. 
paying attention right now to what just happened and knowing that interface builder and your code are separate and they have to match, you have to change both, will save you so much time working with storyboards. And another common thing is sometimes you'll delete your outlets. Like, look, we're no longer using these individual outlets. So, okay, let me just delete them. And because all we need is our selection buttons, uh, IB outlet collection, that's all we're using. Well, again, you make a change in the code, make sure you make that same change in the interface builder. So again, you right click the button, you're gonna see this still has a referencing outlet called accept dare button. Make sure you wanna clean that up because that doesn't exist in the code anymore, but it still exists in interface builder. Again, they're separate. I know I've said that a bunch, but I really wanna drill that point home because that's gonna save you so much time. So go in and delete the outlets uh, that we deleted in the code as well. So again, referencing outlet, delete it. Same thing for reset dare button, uh, delete it. Okay, so now we're all cleaned up good to go. So that covers IB outlets, which again, allows you to reference your storyboard object in code and IB outlet collections, which if you're doing a lot of repetitive stuff, you can throw it into an array and use a for loop on the collection to do whatever you need to do. So finally, let's talk about actions. And these are on things like buttons, sliders, or other controls, where again, if you uh, click on the button here, control drag down to here, uh, and again, insert action outlet or outlet collections, it'll tell you what you can do uh, Xcode. So just drop it there. Uh, we're going to name this accept dare, and these should be named like what they're doing. Like we're accepting the dare when we do this, so uh, accept dare, and it should be like a verb. Um, so type any, nope, it's a UI button, and touch up inside is the default, sender, hit connect. Cool, we're good there. Scroll up a bit. So now what this IB action does is anytime this button is pressed, whatever code you want to execute when that button is pressed, that's what you type in here. So for the accept dare, we're actually going to change the message label, so I'm going to uh, cut this from up from view to load and we're going to paste it here. So uh, we're going to have a little fun with it. So I dare you to tap the button. You're going to accept the dare. So let's put in a bunch of like skull emojis. Little, we're getting a little glim here. Uh, so just copy, command V, command V, command V, command V, command V. Okay, just paste in a bunch of skulls in there. So when we accept the dare, we're going to change the label. And again, we have access to that label because we have an outlet to it to a bunch of skulls here. So now when I run it, uh, the phone's gonna say, tap the buttons, I dare you. There it is right here. And then when we accept the dare, we just put a bunch of skulls uh, up there. And the reason our button moved up is because our label is shrinking dynamically based on how many lines of text and our buttons are pinned to the bottom of the label. So when our label went to one line, it shrunk the label and it slid our buttons up. Um, that's a whole like auto layout thing, but I wanted to point out why that happened. Um, we won't worry about fixing it because again, we're focused on the outlets right now. So let's do some uh, practice here uh, to change the font color and then reset the dare. So stop it. Uh, so now let's get an action from our font color. So again, hold control, drag, insert action outlet or collection. We want an action. We're gonna call this change font color. Make sure the type is a UI button because that's what it is. Again, touch up inside is the default and sender's fine, so cool. So again, this is what happens when we uh, tap the change font color. So let's go to uh, say message label dot text color, here you go. And we can make this dot system red. That's the color we want there. So now when I tap the change font color, my label is gonna change red. And then before we test it, let's go ahead and create our action for the reset dare. So again, control drag, insert the action, say reset dare, not date, <laughs> reset dare, UI button, hit connect. And now for the reset dare, we want to change the uh, message label dot text back to uh, tap the buttons and then four slash n to get a new line. Uh, I dare, I keep saying I date you, <laughs> I dare you. Uh, okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and run this again and test our button. So again, when we tap the accept there, it's gonna change the skulls. When we tap the change font color, it's gonna change the font to red. And then we can reset everything by tapping the reset dare button. And actually I just caught that. We're not gonna reset everything because if we change the font color, we're not adjusting the font color in the reset. So let's actually do that. Message label dot text color uh, equals dot white. So we're gonna change the font back to white. Uh, so let's run it. And now our button should be working. So let's tap the change font color, change it to red, because again, that's what happens in the IB action. And we have access to the message label because we have an IB outlet to that message label. Um, let's go ahead and accept the dare, all the skulls. Let's reset the dare and we're back to white and uh, no skulls. Accept the dare skulls, we can't make red skulls, but whatever. Reset, cool, accept there, reset, 
change font color. So again, the IB actions are whatever happens when you tap the button and the IB outlet gives you access to that object to change it as you need, like we're doing with the message label, you know, text and text color, et cetera. So that's the basics of IB outlets and IB actions and IB outlet collections. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my teaching style, I started creating my own courses. You can check out the link on the screen and we'll see you in the next video.